Welcome to Dab's AI Lab. So I wanted to come on and talk today about the Corsair AI 300 workstation, the AMD Strix Halo 395 Plus um, platform, and just kind of local AI in general, and why I'm launching this YouTube channel, but also talking about this stuff in general. Um, but I'll start with why I wanted to do it in the first place. Um, at work, I use, you know, Cursor, Claude Code, Kiro, Codex, and all the different associated Frontier models that go along with them. And as a software engineering manager, it makes me so much more productive. It makes me really fast. My team also really fast. Startup in general is obviously pushing a lot of these workflows and tool sets. So I'm just using it in a day to day. So obviously that's bled over into my personal life. Um, I have a fairly beefy Mac Studio at the time when I purchased it, and I'm running like Gemma 27B, Quint 3, 30 billion parameter um, coder, um, and a couple other models, and they're actually fairly powerful for what they are. Like I'm, I'm pretty pleased with their performance, for the most part for non-coding tasks. And for coding tasks, they're okay, but honestly, you get so much better performance out of the Frontier models that other than privacy, it's really hard to justify using local machines purely for agentic uses um, unless your privacy is a big concern. And for me, it is. So everybody in my family codes. I code, my wife codes, my son, who's nine years old, he codes. So we like to keep our code local for the most part. We have a Git T server. We have all kinds of things running in our local network. There's a ton of things going on. That's important to us. So looking at these machines, I was thinking, which machine is going to be the best for me? Now, obviously, I could stack a bunch of 3090s together. It'd be a huge power draw, probably cost around the same, maybe a little bit more, but it'd also be faster. Um, didn't want to do that. Too much, too noisy, too much power uh, draw, really expensive. And, you know, I'm just, that's not, I don't want to, like, build a huge thing. I just want something that, for the most part, works out of the box. I don't have to manage it overly much. Um, so that's what I picked the, the, the Corsair for. I could have bought the Framework or the Bosman or the B-Link or any of the other flavors out there, but I wanted something that was shipping fast. Uh, the Framework is, you know, obviously delayed due to demand and good for them. And I also wanted something from a name brand that I could trust. Um, I've purchased tons of Corsair products over the years. They've all generally worked just fine. I think I've had RMA maybe one thing and it was fine. It was, it was easy enough to do where it, didn't wasn't a problem so of course here it was um i ordered it um and within three days i think it was at my doorstep the interesting thing is obviously while i was waiting for it to arrive i found a really awesome wiki and discord server where i've met tons of other strix halo users people building all kinds of cool things people directly like working on the different drivers um that power these boxes and these ai models all kinds of stuff and it's been a, just a great community to you know, talk with and um, learned a lot and continue to learn and hopefully contributing a little bit at the same time. Okay, so the box arrives and obviously the first thing I do is look at, you know, what's it going to look like, out, you know, the out of the box experience. So I boot up Windows and generally everything just kind of worked. I was able to install Elm Studio and Alamo with no issues run a bunch of local models like the ones here like quinn 30b Gemma 27b gpt oss 20b and they all worked with fairly decent sized contacts i was able to you know load them up with a bunch of stuff um run it and the speed was fine i was getting decent speeds i didn't benchmark it per se but i could easily say 40 50 60, 60 tokens per second no issue at all um, one of the things I like about Olama is that you can proxy cloud models through it. So I was able to, like, if I wanted to use Kimi 2, DeepSeek, um, the big Quinn 3, 480B, things like that. And those were, they were great. Um, and one of the things I like about Olama Cloud is that it's, it's, it's free and you can actually get decent usage out of it without having to pay anything because it's kind of an hourly reset and you can get a decent amount of work done within that within that hour and it just resets so it's actually pretty cool if you want to use some of these bigger open source models um, and you don't want to have a lot of complexity or you don't have the machine to run them i think obviously is if i was using this as a mixed machine where i was gaming on it or doing some productivity and other things like that and just running these models alongside of it 
I probably would just be fine with Windows. And I think the average consumer out of the box buying this as a as a mixed use machine that can game a little bit and do things, I think they'd actually be pretty happy with that situation and probably would stay there. Uh, but for me, and I think probably a lot of people that are watching videos like this right now, um, Windows was a limiting um, a limiting factor. I think the big one, the big elephant in the room is obviously you can only use 96 gigabytes of the 128 that your machine has, unless somebody knows something I don't. That's that's as much as you can use. Um, the other thing is that there's some weird issues with like permissions and file paths, being able to switch back and forth between models while loading different driver sets on the fly. So if I wanted to like use something with Vulkan versus Rockham and use this model there, this model there, where I maybe could like benchmark it to see if it was more performing this way or the other. Um, again, I didn't spend a lot of time with Windows. I never was. I was just, this was my out of the box experience. Um, but I couldn't get things to work 100% correctly. I think I loaded up GPT-120B and um, I could get it to load, but I really couldn't do a whole lot with it because it was really slow. And um, as, as soon as the context got over like 10 or 15K, it, it was it was crashing a lot. So again, I'm sure there's probably a lot smarter people than me that have, that have worked with this on Windows and it's fine for them and that's great. Um, but I wanted to do a little bit more. So obviously switch to Linux. Able to obviously with a few tweaks, open up all the memory, get everything running, strip it down to basically a headless mode so the only thing that was on this box, because this box for me is just is just AI. I'm not using it for anything else but that. I have my personal computer. My family has their personal computers. Um, so this is just sitting on our network, and that's all it's doing. And so that's all we wanted it to do. Uh, obviously, loading it up with a bunch of things that, like you know Python, virtual environments, uh, Rust, all these other things that we could just go on there to do a little bit of this and that, run some services that are related to AI. Um, makes it really nice and it just i don't know it ended up working really well for us i would say overall we're really happy with it so far it's only been a week um we've been launching a, all kinds of little nice agenda workflows finding which flavor of models work best for certain things um, but there are a few things to look out for i would say right now rockham support for linux and amd in general is really really a sketch <laughs> it's I think there's a lot of people in the community doing a lot of heavy lifting right now. Um, but uh, yeah, it's the early days of this. I mean, these, this, this machine has only been out for a very short while. The platform, the AMD Strix Halo 395 platform has only been out for a few months overall. And when it comes to like local source models, yes, Hug and Face and Local Almuth have been around for a while, a few years at this point. But I think really kind of hitting the mainstream tech community it's really starting to open up recently. And I think that's where things are starting to shift. And I liken it to like whenever, you know, a lot of people are getting into 3D printing. Like 3D printing has existed in some shape or form for quite a while. But when it's really starting to hit like the consumer level mainstream, I'd say with the Prusa printers and now the Bamboo Labs and all of that. Or if you talk about like cameras, like when people were, you know, back in the day, cameras were really expensive. And if you wanted to get like a really good DSLR, it was like four or five grand or something like that. But now you can get like a Fuji or a Sony camera for like 1500, 2000, the full frame or in Fuji's case, um, APS-C, but still it does really, really well and fairly affordable for what they are. And I think that's where local AI is getting and these kind of boxes are getting is like out of the box, nowhere near the power draw of a 3090. Now it's not as fast, obviously, but I don't have to do a lot of weird tinkering to get it to work. Yes, I did have to install Linux, but I installed Ubuntu 2510 just with a thumb drive. I didn't have to tinker with it. I don't want to tinker with it too much. I just want things to work for the most part. There are a lot of people in this hobby that are going to do a lot of tinkering with it. They're going to run different flavors of Arc, Fedora, et cetera on it. More power to them. They're going to get 10 to 15% better performance, maybe more than me. Um, what I want is fast enough with no headache. Ubuntu, I also mess with Cache OS, work fine too, but either way, works out of the box for the most part, very cleanly with Windows, and now with Linux, I just get a little bit more power and a little bit more flexibility, and like right now, I know Rockham is doing really well at moderate to large contexts and a little bit faster prompt processing, so I'm everything I'm running is on Rockham. If Vulkan is faster tomorrow, it's really easy for me to just rebuild the uh, rebuild it and use Vulkan. 
And if something else comes along, pretty easy as well. So again, easy enough for me to work with. I'm really happy with the purchase. So what am I doing with it? So obviously I'm building a lot of stuff. Um, I'm building, like this is a Rust um, basically monitoring dashboard that's going to look for the, you know, what's loaded as the model, what's the system resources, and obviously interact with a little bit to load and unload models. Um, it's showing me the latest driver builds that I can switch to if I want, things like that. I'm building a few SDKs. I built one in Python. It's already out and available. I'm building, I'm going to also build a Rust one. Might build a few others, but these are going to power a lot of the agents and stuff that we're running locally. Um, so I'm going to make them available for everybody. If you want them, they'll be linked to my GitHub. I'm also building a Drep clone, a Greptile clone. I call it Drep. Um, I'm building all kinds of fun stuff. Like one of the things that my family does is we have. Um, we do like LARPing and role-playing games. So I was using Quinn 30 before, and now I'm using uh, Ling Flash 2.0. It's actually not bad at creative writing. Um, and it basically creates our own adventures for LARPing. I, it's a, and, it create, and it runs through the adventures with you, tells you what to say, tells you how to play the adventures with your kids. I use um, image generation models to create badges um, that you can award out to players and stuff like that. I'll showcase that later. But I'm just wanting to build stuff for me and my family to run at home. None of this is coding related. If again, for coding, I pretty much use the big frontier models. I have messed around with some of the other models. I like G GLM 4.5 Air. I think it's actually fairly decent for what it is, but I have access to the big boys when it comes to coding. So I mostly do that. However, GPT-120 for my son is, I don't want him necessarily doing a bunch of stuff, uh, giving out all his data when he's so young right now. Um, that's actually been really good. But again, he's doing like Scratch and Python. So fairly easy stuff. The table stakes are really, really low. He's not doing very complex things. He's building small scripts, working with Pygame, things like that. So these models, I think, work fine for that. And um, we're also, but again, a lot of them are powering non-coding workflows and things like that. Like I have a meal planner where I use a vision model. The, what I'm testing the latest Quinn vision models that just came out recently to scan the receipts so it, and then scan my fridge. I just take pictures of them, give it to the model. It knows what I bought at the grocery store, what I currently have in my fridge or my pantry, and then it can create recipes and we can do a meal plan. It syncs to our Google Calendar, all of that. It's just really easy multi-turn workflows um, that we can do um, with Python and just a little, in small, relatively small models. So the, I just wanna just talk about the kind of things that we can build that are helpful at home helpful for the everyday kind of like living and using agents to make things just a little bit funner and um, you know take care of some of the monotony around a lot of things. So I'll start talking about that in the weeks to come. I'll release everything on GitHub and if you guys want to follow along, that'd be great. Anyway, that's all I got. If you have any questions about the hardware or about the stuff I'm doing, feel free to ask. I'm happy to respond. Again, join that Discord. I'll link it below. Have a good day.